Hi there, welcome to Get Productive with Microsoft Azure Deployment Templates. This is Episode 6, Deploy a Storage Account with PowerShell. My name is Tim Warner. I have three learning goals for you today. First, we're going to quickly review what an Azure storage account is. You'll notice if you've been following this study guide sequentially that I'm really hanging tough on the storage account as our first deployment template. And I want you to know that I did that fully decidedly. I wanted to make sure that we were starting with the simplest deployment I can think of and storage account immediately came to mind. So anyway, that's a bit on that. As far as PowerShell goes, this isn't a PowerShell course as such, but I want to briefly review the three most important PowerShell commands, what we trainers normally refer to as the Holy Trinity commandlets. And then the centerpiece today is performing an ARM template deployment using Azure PowerShell. TimW.info slash ARM will take you to an Excel online document that has this course's full TOC. An Azure storage account is the main general purpose storage repository in the Azure cloud. It's called an object storage repository. And as you can see on the right-hand side of this slide, the general purpose storage account has four services. Containers for unstructured data, what are called binary large objects or blobs. We could be talking about CSV files used in a data science project, static website artifacts, you name it, general purpose storage. File shares is for server message block and network file system file shares. The table service is part of Azure Cosmos DB. It's semi-structured key value pair storage. And queues is the smaller variant, that is the storage account queue, is the smaller variant of the larger Azure Service Bus product. The queue is a way to do publication and subscription of message data in decomposed microservices applications. The Azure storage account has a high degree of availability. We don't need to get into the weeds of the service level agreement numbers, but just know that that is the case. And for the blob service, you can configure multi-region replication and failover as well. Two big centerpiece use cases that Microsoft advertises for the storage account are in big data analytics, for example, using Azure HD Insight or Databricks, and also the Azure Machine Learning Service. We can use the blob service in particular to store source data as we're training machine learning models. There are three PowerShell commands, just general purpose PowerShell 7 commands that everybody should know and what you can use to start with. Get command is used for command discovery. For example, in the slide, you see get command module az.compute. So that's saying I'm looking for a particular command or commands that are in the az.compute module. In Azure PowerShell, each service provider is contained in its own module. So we've got az.compute for all of the virtual machine-related commands, for example. And notice we can add some additional parameters to get command if we're looking only for a particular verb. And if we're looking for a particular noun or noun stem, notice azvm star says show me all of the commands in the az.compute module that have new as their verb and which start with azvm. Second most important command is get help, and this is to get examples and syntax guidance and information about the command. So for instance, you could use get command to find the new azvm command, and then you could do, for instance, get help, name new azvm examples to see one or more use cases of that command. Now, of course, you'd have to run update help first because PowerShell has never shipped with local documentation by design. You want to periodically make sure that your help is current. And lastly, we have get member. Get member is useful to see what you can do with the objects that a command produces. What do I mean by that? Well, if you look in the third example, get azvm, this is saying look for the VM called timvm1 in the tim resource group. Fetch a reference to that virtual machine object and then show me all of the properties and methods and events that are available. Long story short, a property is just an attribute. For instance, what's the VM size? How long has it been online? Is it turned on or turned off? Methods are actions that the object can take, start, stop, restart, and events are activities that can happen to that virtual machine. It's been stopped and deallocated, for example. GetMember is really going to unlock your PowerShell skills as you start to string together these pipelines and eventually building functions and modules on your own. 
Now, to put this PowerShell into a strict Azure context, let's look at ARM template validation and deployment with Azure PowerShell. There are two commandlets that you need to know here. They're long commandlets, but remember we have tab completion in PowerShell. And number two, the syntax for them is just about identical, which is a good thing. First of all, we can see test AZ resource group deployment. You specify the target resource group name. Remember that for resource deployments, the scope is always the resource group. And then there are a number of parameters. I would suggest you run get help examples to see all of the different parameters that are available. But template file assumes that you have the JSON locally on your system. And that's going to perform a validation against the schema that's declared at the top of the template file. Once you've resolved your issues with validation, you can run essentially the same syntax, but this time using new AZ resource group deployment to actually submit the deployment to Azure. Now, these examples presuppose that you've already authenticated to Azure with the connect AZ account commandlet and that you've set your subscription context. In this demo, we'll deploy an ARM template using Azure PowerShell. And after complaining about this for several lessons, we're finally going to correct it now and work out of a folder. As you might see in my file explorer, I've got a folder called scripts, and I'm going to right click here on my Windows 10 system and create a file called storage account. And I'm gonna make sure to change the file type to JSON. And then what we'll do is open up VS Code and I'll do a file open folder, browse to the root of my drive C where I've created the scripts folder and let's open the folder. Why is working in a folder an important principle in VS Code? Well, one reason right off the top is that the search functionality is scoped to the folder. So you can do a global find and replace, but only on files that are in a folder. Also, just from an organizational standpoint, it makes sense as well. Let's change the color theme, I'll go to view color palette and I'll type color theme and select preferences color theme. I'm going to choose ISE, which I've used in previous lessons. Okay, because I've set up VS Code like I taught you a few lessons back, we can see now this is a JSON file, but I'm going to invoke some of the snippets by typing ARM and then enter to give us a bare empty template. It's now registered as an ARM template down below. And then in the resources array, I'm going to type ARM dash storage to create a generic storage account resource. And what's cool about the snippets is notice the highlight. You can jump from highlight to highlight and it'll actually expose the different enumerations. I tabbed down to kind, for instance, and notice we can choose of the various storage account kinds, which is pretty cool. Same thing for tier. I'm going to change the tier to standard rather than premium. I want to get to the PowerShell quickly, so we're not going to do a whole lot with this definition. Let me zoom in a little bit. Of these properties, let me just change the SKU to standard LRS. I'll choose the less expensive option, and I change the tier to standard. The kind is going to be storage v2, but the name has to be globally unique. So what I'm going to do is pull this out as a parameter. I'll call it STG ACCT name, global unique name of the storage account. It's a good practice to use this metadata element when you define parameters so that your teammates know what the meaning of the parameter is. And the default value, instead of it being a static literal, I'm going to use a template expression. Remember, I mentioned this in the previous lesson, that if you put square brackets inside of double quotes, you can build an expression. And ARM has a number of built-in functions, concat being one of the most popular. This allows you to take two or more pieces of string data and stick them together. So what I'm going to do here is concatenate TWSTG, a static string literal, that'll be the prefix of my storage account, comma, and then I can call the unique string built-in function. What's that? That's used to generate unique identifiers. And when you use the unique string function, you're going to need to put something in it. And normally a common pattern is to grab the resource group ID. So let me just walk you through this expression, what's going on. So in this situation, the name of the storage account, the default value that will be passed in, is going to be the result of an expression in which we're concatenating a static prefix with a unique value that Azure will generate, and it will use as its seed the resource group ID property. Actually, I've got this little bit incomplete. So let me drop a dot and a tab to put in that dot ID. The resource group needs to already be in existence. Every object in Azure Resource Manager has an ID, an object ID associated with it. 
This is just a common pattern if you need to ensure or do what you can to ensure global uniqueness. Well, let's save and let's bring up our terminal. I'm just going to come down to the status bar and drag upwards. Let's see. It looks like we have a validation problem. Expected or right parentheses. Yeah, that's a common issue for sure with JSON. There we go. So I added that. Looks like we're good to go. So let's go to terminal and let me change my location to C scripts. Clear the screen and let me do a get az context and pipe that to format list to make sure that yes, I'm signed in with the Azure Active Directory credential I want to be signed in as, and my subscription is correct. And I'm going to start with test az. Well, actually, before I do that, I have to think where am I going to deploy this storage account? How about we create a resource group for it just for our testing purposes? New az resource group. What's nice about PowerShell is how consistent the languages. I'll call this ARM test and the location that I use is East US. So now that I have that resource group, I can do test AZ resource G tab. The resource group name is going to be a tab. It's really beautiful that the Azure PowerShell commands nowadays will actually auto complete values for you too with tab completion. So please pick up that tip if you pick up nothing else. <laughs> and then I'm going to do template. You can just cycle through the options by using tab to go forward or shift tab to go backwards. I need template file and it's going to be storage account. The dot backslash or dot forward slash if you're on Mac OS and Linux just denotes that the file is in the current working directory. I'm already in the scripts folder. So let me press enter. And this is what you want to see. You want to see it come back with no results. That is implied that the template has validated. Now I'll clear the screen and now let me up arrow a couple times to go into my command history. And this time let me just change the test to new. And another thing that's kind of cool that we can add on to our new AZ resource group deployment is the what if switch parameter. What if has been in PowerShell since the beginning, but it's fairly benign. It's not, hasn't historically been all that useful for general purpose PowerShell, but its use with ARM templates is actually quite nice. I think that what if is inspired by HashiCorp Terraform, how you can look at state and have it generate its plan, its execution plan, what it's going to do. All right, so we can see in the result of our what if expression that we're doing a create tells us the deployment scope. In this case, it's the ARM test resource group. And in this case, we're going to add a storage account with these properties. This is a useful tool, this what if is, because it can give you an idea of exactly what the deployment is going to do and how it will affect your resource group. Let me clear the screen again. It looks like I've got a little bit of foreground background formatting going on, kind of weird. I'm going to up arrow a couple times, get rid of what if, and now we're actually submitting this deployment to Azure. And the feedback comes back that this was a successful deployment. We can verify that, of course, by heading on over to the portal. And inside portal, let's navigate to resource groups. We've got our ARM test resource group. And lastly, we have, let me click the link, our storage account name. I probably should have put a little bit more thought into that name because that's not going to be a very fun name to remember. But the template deployment went down exactly as we wanted it to go down using that concat function to take our static string and then generating a value based on the resource group's ID. For further learning, I'm a big fan of the PS Coans project. There's a PowerShell community member named Joel Salo who's put this together. It's a GitHub repo that takes you through using gamification, learning PowerShell. Great, great tool. TimW.info slash temp6a is the short URL. Microsoft Learn has a free module on Azure storage accounts. If you want to buff up your knowledge on the storage account usage, it's called Store Data in Azure, TimW.info slash temp6b. And looking ahead to the next lesson, just as far as a pre-reading assignment, Azure Command Line Interface Overview, timw.info slash temp6c. And yes, I've let the proverbial cat out of the bag. The next episode is called Deploy a Storage Account with the Azure CLI. Again, you can find the course TOC at timw.info slash ARM. My Twitter handle is techtrainertim. My plural site courses are at timw.info slash ps. And my website is techtrainertim.com. All the best to you. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thanks very much.